Okay. All right. Man, the best stuff. You know when you go to a party, don't you want to bring your best? Um, I've, I've gone to parties. I don't know about some of you. Yeah, and maybe it is some of you. I don't know. But sometimes I go to a party and, and say, okay, everybody, potluck, yeah? Everybody bring something, bring something. And somebody shows up with a little Lay's package of chips. And it's like, <laughs> yes, see if you get invited the next time, right? I mean, you want to bring your best stuff, food, uh, fun. You want to bring your best person. You don't want somebody at the party going, oh, I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Why do you make me come to this? That's kind of, you don't want that kind of guys at your party. You want to make people feel good, don't you? You come to the party, it's not about you. I mean, you wouldn't, wouldn't want a narcissist at the party. You know the narcissist, here I am, I'm at the party, let it, let it start now. You know, you don't want that kind of guy there. You want people who's going to make other people feel better. Didn't happen to Grandpa. Grandpa was celebrating his 100th birthday, and the family rolled him out into the, the, the backyard to enjoy this barbecue. And in his wheelchair, he's sitting, and he starts leaning over to his right. So his son stuffs a pillow next to him to prop him upright. So he starts leaning to his left. The daughter comes and stuffs the pillow, so he has to sit upright. And he starts leaning forward. And the other son comes, stuffs the pillow, and ties his, to, his, to his waist with a belt so he could sit up upright. And the grandson walks in and he goes, So, Grandpa, how's life treating you? He goes, Terrible. Nobody lets me lean over so I can pass my gas. <laughs> Everybody sit up straight. Everybody sit up straight. You find somebody leaning over like this. You, you want to move far away from them. But you want to make people feel better when you come to a party. Let me ask you this question. Do, does your presence make people feel better? Wherever you are, does your presence make people feel better? Now, we've said this many times, that God has sovereignly placed you wherever you are, whether in uh, your workplace or your school or, you know, even your family. And sometimes we feel, oh, we don't really want to be there, but somehow in, in God's grand narrative that he's placed you there, there's a sovereignty of all of that. Do people look forward to seeing you wherever he's placed you? Are you bringing the good stuff to wherever you are present? We're continuing the Christmas series, and the Christmas series is all about the gift of presents. And I want you to take a look at a scripture with me today. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. Our ushers will gladly pass out a Bible to you. Jeremiah 29. Now, some of you might be saying, well, sh shouldn't we be in Luke? Shouldn't we be in Matthew about the birth of Jesus? After all, it's Christmas time. I want you to see something about the gift of presence. Presence. P-R-E-N. P-R-E. Presence. Not, not the, the gifts you give away, just your presence. Jeremiah 29. Because God is going to say something to the people of Israel that I think he's also saying to us today. Jeremiah is a prophet, talked about, you know, what's going to happen with the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel has been sent into exile. Despite all that God had provided for them, all that God had done for them, they were still living a life that was disobedient as a nation. And so God said, I'm going to, I'm going to take you up. I'm going to uproot you from your homeland of Jerusalem. And I'm going to have another country come in and take you away, the exiled, to a, a country called Babylon. And so, in other words, the Israelites had to leave everything. They left their home, their possessions, their, their businesses, everything, to live in a foreign land. And God says, it's not going to be for long. But while you're there, and here's what I want us to catch, because some of us may be in situations that we really don't want to be when you talk about the presence. Take a look at what he says. Jeremiah 29, go to verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Okay? This is what God is saying. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Notice what he's saying. I'm going to take you from where you were, put you into a foreign land. God is not saying, so now stay there, you disobedient people. You don't deserve anything. 
because of your disobedience, I'm going to wipe out everything that you own, and you're just going to sit there and rot. No, he doesn't say that. He says, build houses. Marry and give your sons and daughters to marry so that they have children. In other words, create a generation of what's happening here. Because one day you're going to come back. One day you're going to end up back where I took you from. But here's what the really important stuff that I want you to catch. Verse 7. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Now, if you've never underlined anything in the Bible ever before, underline this last verse. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Wherever I've placed you, don't sit there and grumble and monkle and say, say this is bad. I want, you to, I want you to invest in that place, wherever I place you, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. If your family prospers, you too will prosper. If your school prospers, you too will prosper. You see what he's getting there? Sometimes we might think, oh, man, there's no gift of presence because I don't want to be present. God said, there's a sovereign plan at work here. And you may not be there forever, but while you're there, bring your best stuff. Give it your best. Because if it does well, so will you. Bring your best. The city prospers, so will you. See, we're all just passing through in this life. The book of Philippians says we're just almost like ambassadors passing. Our citizenship is in heaven. If you've declared Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you say there's nothing else in this world that I want to believe in except Jesus and the truth of Jesus, then your name is written in his book of life, and eventually we will return home. We're just passing through here. But while we're here, bring your best. While we're here, bring your best to the party or what life can be if everybody just brings the best that they have. Sometimes I think we struggle with that because we kind of forget the reason for why we're actually in this season called Christmas. Yeah, people say, the reason for the season, remember the reason for the season. And I think sometimes we forget that. We get so involved with everything in the world or things around us speak somehow into our lives or we catch on to this or that. And, and the whole issue of why are we doing this kind of gets cloudy. There's a town in Massachusetts that I just read about. There's a public library in this little town. And they always put up a Christmas tree in this library, public library. And uh, it was on the news because they decided that this year not to put up a Christmas tree. And the people in the town are going, what's going on? And so they, they asked and they questioned and they asked the, the librarian and the people in charge of the library, why is it that you're not putting up a Christmas tree this year? And they said, oh, because two of our employees feel uncomfortable about that. And the neighboring people said, we don't understand. They celebrate every other religion and every other season. Why not just a Christmas tree? There was always a Christmas tree when I grew up. My kids look forward to going to the library and seeing the Christmas tree all decorated. You know, things are happening in the world that's influencing the decisions that we make, even if it's just two people in the midst of a whole thing. And we can have a tendency to forget the reason why we're doing all this. I'll say this very carefully. I, I, I don't mean to offend anybody. I don't mean to cast any judgment on anyone, but I've heard that there are some churches in our community that will not be having Christmas service on Sunday. Okay, what? <laughs> well, you know, we want to make sure that our volunteers have a chance to rest. Okay, I get that, but isn't it, wait, first of all, Sunday, and isn't it Christmas? Isn't that why we have Christmas? Don't we celebrate Christmas because of the reason? What is the reason? What is the reason? That's, that's what it really caused, caused me to kind of wrestle with. So why are we celebrating Christmas? Why not stay home and unwrap gifts with your family? If you choose to do that, that's fine. That's not, I'm not casting any judgment on anybody. You, you choose what you want to do. 
But in my own mind, I think, why don't I just stay home and just unwrap gifts, you know? Why not just, why are we having Christmas? Why do we celebrate Christmas? You know why I think we celebrate Christmas? Because that was the day that God gave his very best. That God brought his best into our lives. He didn't have to. When, when Jesus was born, the world wasn't in a perfect setting. It was terrible. God had given the people everything. They had prophets to, to, to prophesy about what was going to happen. They had temple sacrifice to make everything right. They had everything, but that wasn't enough. And so God said, I'm going to give my best to you. I'm going to bring my best to you. And here's where we get into the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2. For God so loved the world that he gave, Luke 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Okay, when I read scripture, if you're new to Metro, if you haven't been around me for a while, I'm going to say this. Get visual with me, please. Jump into the Bible. That's why I love the written word. Jump into the words. You know, put on your, your best Netflix hat or whatever. Jump into that and, and see the scene that's unfolding. There are shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. I'm so glad we had a chance to go to Israel uh, a few years back because they took us to the place and they said, well, this is about where they think, based on everything else, where the shepherds were when the angels came. And this is beautiful field. I have a visual imagery in my mind of what's going on here when I read the Bible. There is a field out there. And imagine all the sheep out there with these shepherds at night. Verse 9, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news. Good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Okay, imagine this. You're one of the shepherds. Beautiful, grassy field. Sheep are there. It's at night. It's all dark. No city lights at all. And you're sitting out there. All you hear is, Probably one of the shepherds going, It's all quite peaceful. And the angel of the Lord appeared. What did that look like? And he said, I bring you good news. Notice the scene wasn't, they're all out there at night, sheep is, and boom, this fire comes out and says, you sinners, I'm going to destroy all of mankind because of the sin. No, that wasn't the news. It was good news. Why? Because God loved the world so much that he gave something so sweet and innocent to show us how much he loved us. I bring you good news, great joy. It was an uplifted spirit. The shepherds were terrified. I would be. Would you? I would be terrified. And the angel said, no, 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 no. It's good news. It's good news. It's going to bring great joy. Verse 11. For today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. There have been prophets talking about a Messiah coming for years and years and years. And the angel declares, he is the Messiah. All that you've been hearing, this is the guy. And this will be a sign to you that you'll find a baby wrapped in cloths lying in a manger. God could have shown himself in any other form. True? He could have come on this huge horse or whatever with flaming arrows and a sword of flame and trying to destroy and cut everything. He didn't. He came in the form of a little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes or... or you ever seen a newborn baby? You, you, you just wrap him up because that makes him feel the most comfortable. And when you look at that baby, what do you think of? Evil? No, not yet. Maybe a couple more years. But you, you look at that baby and all you think about is innocence. The innocence of a little child. And God showed himself in that form. Why? Because God loved the world so much. I think sometimes we forget that. That God gave his best to an undeserving world. 
because he loved us so much. Reverend Abraham Akaka came across one of the sermons that he preached at Kauaihao back in uh, 1965. And he said this, the other day someone asked me, how are you coming along with your Christmas shopping? I was tempted to say, all I need is money. <laughs> but this person was having the usual problems of the average Christmas shopper of deciding what she would give to Tutu Man and Kuule. It was rough. She had already given so much to all of her loved ones. What more could she give? When we think of it, God had this same problem when Christmas rolled around 2,000 years ago. He had already given mankind everything they could possibly need, food, clothing, houses to live in, etc., etc. What else was there to give? So what else could my Kamaina friend give to her beloved family? You know, you know what the answer to that question is? God gave himself. This was the only thing he had not yet given to man. And he chose this special time, Christmas, as, a, as the time to give himself. When the prophets predicted the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, saying, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, or God with us, they hit the nail on the head. He preached that in 1965. And I can hear his words being preached to us the same today. That when God gave us, when, when we come around Christmas time, it's, it's all about God giving his very best into our lives. Emmanuel, God is with us. God is present with us. So what stands in the way then? Here's the, the tension point that I come to. If God says, bring your best to the party, bring your best to life, what, what stands in the way of us giving our best to our relationships, in our workplace, wherever he's placed us? What stands in the way where we feel we've given our best, but we still feel like, eh, that's, that's not what it's all about? Well, what prevents Christians especially, those who, who have God in us, what, what stands in the way of us giving that out now to others around us? And I think, I think, possibly, it could be a lack of a full understanding of the depth and the breadth of God's love for us. That library in Massachusetts, that couple of employees who were bothered by it, I don't think they truly understand the depth and the breadth of God's love. Because if we truly understand how much he loves us and how much we're so full of his love, don't you want to give away? You would want to give that away. But I wonder sometimes that we struggle through that stuff. And so I wanted to teach our, our, our preschool. Oh, you guys are so lucky because I taught my preschool class again this last week. And these kids got it. And I thought, oh, these kids got it. Maybe you guys need to get it too. <laughs> But the word was love. And we talked about, um, you know, what does love mean? And uh, I had different examples, and I, and I asked him, I said, so, so what do you love? So at Christmas time or whenever else in life, what do you love? Because sometimes we don't know what that word really means. And some, one of the kids said, ice cream. One kid, is, she's, she's, she's older and she's bigger and... And she, I said, ice cream? She goes, yeah, ice cream. So I showed this picture. I said, you mean ice cream like this? And her eyes just lit up. And, and, I, and I said, okay, so which one of you would love, well, who loves vanilla? And he goes, me, me, me. So, okay, if you love vanilla, you got to wait until everybody else eats their share to get to the very bottom. And she goes, no, no. I said, no, here's how I would do it. And I'm holding this picture of that cone. And I said, well, if it was me, I, I turned the picture upside down. I said, I would eat the ice cream cone like this. Oh, I put it in my mouth. And she's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, ice cream. What else do you love? Candy. How much candy? You want this kind of candy? Oh, yeah. I said, okay, that's a lot of candy. Okay, what else do you love? Uh, Disneyland. You mean these guys? Yeah, we want to go to Disneyland. So they all love this stuff. I said, that's good, you know. But sometimes I think if we you say we love something like that, um, but really, really, we really don't mean, we don't understand what that means that we love. 
And they look at me, you know, and I go, okay, so like ice cream, okay? You love ice cream? Yeah. Okay, imagine if you had ice cream for breakfast. And that girl, she goes, yeah. I said, okay, and then you had it for lunch. Yeah. And you had it again for dinner. Oh, she's getting all, you know, excited. And I said, and then you have it again tomorrow for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And the next day, for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And the, the kid next to her is this skinny little kid. And she goes, you would get a stomachache. I said, yeah, yeah, you get a stomachache. But you say we love stuff, but sometimes we don't really know what that means. Okay, so God has a different kind of love for us. So I pull out the Bible. It's our chapel. So I pull out the Bible. I go to, I go to Psalm 136. And I say, okay, this is what Psalm 136 says. And so they look at the Bible and they go, where's the pictures? I said, no need pictures, no need pictures, okay. This is what Psalm 136 says. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And I write that on the board. His love endures forever. You know what else he says? Give thanks to the God of gods, for his love endures forever. And then I, I say, give thanks to the Lord of hosts, or Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love, and by now they're repeating after me. His love endures, even though they don't know how to read, they're just associating what I say. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures, and they all go, forever. I said, okay. You know what forever means? They go, what? I said, so if you were to go up on a hill and you look out on all the way down where you see, you see the ocean and then where the sky kind of meets the ocean, you see there's a line over there, okay? And then you go all this side. You go all the way down like, like Wainai side. You see, you know where the brush fire is going? Never mind that. You see the, the line over there, the ocean and the sky. I said, I said, that's far. You know what forever is? Beyond that, way beyond that. God's love lasts way beyond that. See, our love is a little different. So I go, I go, you know, sometimes we, we have a love of, for something. You know, God puts us in situations that, you know, we, we, uh, Sometimes we don't have any choice over it. Sometimes we do. But we say we love, let's get, you say you love Disneyland. Okay. So we love Disneyland. You guys love Disneyland? Yeah, we love Disneyland. Okay, so we take our love and we try to soak up as much of our love as we can because we love Disneyland. And so we go to Disneyland and we go, oh, I love Disneyland. I love paying all the bills. I love eating the, the turkey leg. I love the ride. Oh, I love, I love all that. And then we go, oh, I'm tired now. I'm tired now. Well, what about your friend? Your friend in the hospital. He's sick. You need to pray for him. You got to love him. Okay, let me love him. Uh, not enough love. Okay, but I love Disneyland. I love Disneyland. Okay, let me, let me love my friend. Okay, run out. Go back and get more love. And you try and get, but no more enough no more love, love to give out to everybody else. And we say, you know what? Even though we say we love something, we kind of run dry after a while. It just don't make sense. I don't understand. That's our kind of love. You want to see God's love? God's love lasts forever. Let me show you what God's love looks like. Here is God's love. This is God's love. Because you can love something so much, so you go to God and you get, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his son Jesus, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life, do not perish. And so you take the love that he gives you, and now if you want to, if you want to go to Disneyland, you can. Go to Disneyland. Oh, oh, but what about my friend sick? Okay, give love over here too. Well, what about you, this other guy over here? Give love too. What about this guy over here? Okay, love too. And then, and then sometimes we go, oh, I feel tired now. I, I'm running out of love. So you know what? You went talk stink about me, so I'm going to take back some of your love so I, I can give to somebody else. Say, no, no, you don't have to do that because God's love for you lasts what? forever. So you go back to God, 
and you get some more love. And God loves you so much that he says, now, go love everybody else around you. Bring the best to everybody else. Oh, okay, so I can love here too, yeah. I can love my mommy even though she never gave me dessert. Yeah, I can live my, love my friend even though he steal my toy. I can love people that's sick. Oh, I, I'm getting tired. Where are you going? Go back and get some more love. And you get some more love. You see, God's love lasts how long? Forever. And the kid goes, okay, uh, how much water is in there? <laughs> and they go, you know, God's love lasts forever. Let me show you how... So God's love lasts forever. And they're all looking at me. They're trying to look under the table to see how deep this thing goes. God's love lasts forever. But here's the thing I want you to know. Even though you might come to the Lord and you get filled up with his love, you go Bible study, you, read the, you uh, sing songs, you, you pray, and you get filled up with his love, what do you need to do with that love in order to fill up with his love again? You got to give it away. Don't you? I mean, if you have so much of God's love, but you don't fill up and you don't give it away to people around you, you don't bring your best to wherever God has placed you, you can never fill up again. I mean, it, it's just going to be a waste of time. You're going to stand here and you're going to go, okay, this is getting boring. I go to church, but nothing's happening in my life. You know why nothing's happening in your life? Because you're not giving stuff away. And God says, bring your best. Wherever I placed you, you bring your best. Look at what the scripture says. First John. God is love, and all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. That's why we say one of the mantras of this church is change by Jesus so we can live like Jesus. Why do we want to live like Jesus? So we have confidence in the last day. I told my wife Joy, I said, um, enjoy me now because I don't know if you're going to see me later on. After all that I've done in my life, she goes, okay, well, see you later. No, no, just kidding. Uh, but you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, all the, the sin. How many sinners in the house, by the way? Anybody? Just me? Okay, good. You guys never raise your hand. You're sinners. John, sinner, Bonnie. Yeah, we're all sinners, the Bible says. And for me, personally, sometimes I wonder, man, is it good enough? I don't get to heaven by my works. Okay, let's make, make sure that's straight. It's by my faith in Jesus that allows me entrance into heaven. But what the Bible is saying in John is that, but you also want to live like Jesus. And when you love like Jesus, when your life has been changed by Jesus and you live like Jesus, you don't have to worry that when you get there, you have confidence to stand before the Lord God. We've done a lot here at Metro. And we've talked about us moving from Aloha Tower to here. And so why are we here? And we've shared some things about what's going on. I want you to hear, you know, we have a responsibility. We have a, a commandment from the Lord God to, to bring the best to wherever we are. I want Pastor Brandon to come up and just ex share with us the things that we've done and the things that we're looking forward to moving into the future. So we, br we bring the best to wherever God has placed us here. I love calling him my lead pastor because it allows me to go out and do more other things. But would you welcome Pastor Brandon as he comes and he shares what's going to happen. Good morning, man. I'm really excited to talk about what we've done as a church. Can you believe that it's the end of 2022? Isn't that crazy? In a few short weeks, it's going to be 2023 already. And I thought in this message about being present, we're replaced that it's important for us to remember God has placed us here for a reason. Some of you were here at a part of this church when we were first started at Aloha Tower. We thought we were going to be there forever. We thought that God has placed us there in the downtown area by the waterfront next to the Kaka'ako development stuff happening. But when everything changed and we had to find a place to move to, we had 30 days to find a place. And by the grace of God, God placed us here. And if you agree that God placed us at this location for a reason, would you say amen? You know, God doesn't do anything by accident. We know that's true. 
And sometimes we don't know why he does it. When we first came in here, we're like, why are Kalihi? Like, why are we in Kalihi? Like, we had all these other things we could do in other places. But praise God he put us here. Because there's so much that God is doing in our church. We're going to be present where he's placed us. Um, if you were at the Servants Appreciation Party on Tuesday, you're going to hear some of the stats. Uh, you've already heard these of where we've gone this year as a church. But if you weren't there, can I just recap where we've been this past year? It's been an awesome year. I'll show you a couple pictures too along the way. Remember that earlier in February this year, we celebrated our 10th anniversary as a church. At the 10th anniversary, my dad and I went through a leadership transition where he stepped to the side and allowed me to become the lead pastor. We got a couple of photos of this, of times where they installed me as a lead pastor here at Metro. An awesome celebration that we had also of acknowledging and celebrating the ministry that God has done through my dad. Um, all the big Paniolo Festival, so many big hands uh, were into making this a fun time. Food and games, and thank you for you servants that made that an awesome time of celebration for our church family and then also our Ahu family. Thank you so much, guys. But you know, on top of that, we celebrated our Easter services. Here's a picture of our Easter service that we had. Um, Andy Cole, who's a master wood turner, was turning bowls outside. If you were here for that, there was sawdust everywhere. Remember that? And the whole theme was going from broken to beautiful. How God makes broken things like us into beautiful things because that's the hand of God. We heard a wonderful testimony from Sarah, who is a part of our church. Sarah's a Kalihi girl, has been doing ministry in Kalihi just as someone working in the community. Pleased to announce that um, she's still doing youth uh, with a mission, YWAM, over on the mainland in Oregon. And is traveling to Asia and doing all kinds of stuff. But I love that God is using her. Look, at, look how pretty she is with that hakule and all those lays on. And look at that weirdo on the other side like this. I don't know why they always get pictures of me looking weird like that. Hey, we had more than 600 people attend our Easter services. We had so many hands go up to receive or rededicate their lives to Christ. Um, it's interesting coming out of the pandemic time, kind of coming into how we're trying to normalize all these things that we're restarting again. We had uh, three baptism opportunities this past year. We baptized almost 40 people through different baptism uh, events. What's great is not only church picnics, but also our men's ministry had an impromptu baptism. And what's really cool is seeing people make a decision for Christ and then take the plunge literally. Would you give a hand to the Lord for all the people that chose to get baptized, <laughs> chose to make a decision for Christ? Really, really cool. Speaking of men's ministry, we had a steak dinner. We had our men's retreat for the first time in three years. We had uh, 75 people attend this retreat on about fighting the good fight. Um, I know they hate this, but can we just put our hands together and thank God for the ministry he does through Robert and Lisa Flores and their leadership. Thank you so much, guys. They're servant hearts to see this happen. Um, on top of that, our women's ministry had a retreat, and it's cool because the men had 75. The women um, answered the bell and had 86 women at our women's retreat. Hearing from uh, this wonderful woman, Monica Swanson, and other ministry parts, so many of you ladies uh, were telling us about wonderful things happening at the women's retreat. My wife came back and said, how was it? She goes, it was so good. Told me all that God was doing in her heart, seeing ladies bond over different things. It was really cool to see that. Now, on top of that, our next gen, which is our youth ministries coming up, they were on Friday nights. They shifted to Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. And Willie Paul and his team are up there right now uh, just ministering to our middle schoolers and high schoolers, showing them who Jesus is in an interactive way. I love what they're doing. Uh, they also had a youth camp. Over 175 students from various churches gathered. We were one of those churches. Um, our kids had a blast seeing that it's not just our church, that we're a part of something bigger as a four-square church. So cool seeing God move in the lives of our junior hires and high schoolers. We also had our interns. We had two youth interns for the summer. Asa and Gabe were a part of our youth group, uh, but also decided to give time during the summer. So that was pretty cool. Speaking of kids, Metro Kids opened up a second service. You remember when every Sunday we were up here going, hey, we need volunteers. Can you volunteer? So many of you volunteer with Metro Kids. And because of that, we're able to minister to toddlers so two-year-olds can be in Metro Kids, hear about Jesus, and their parents can sit uninterrupted during service. So I love that we have that kind of ministry here. The last part of Next Gen is our preschool. Now, Metro Christian Academy, MCA, is a ministry of the church. Let me say that again. The preschool is not a standalone. It's a ministry of the church. That's really important. Here's why. Because we don't see it as, oh, that's the school and this is the church. Oh, no, no. This is the church. The school is a part of it. 
and I love that of these 16 kids that graduated last year, some of them have church background, a lot of them don't. And these kids are hearing about Jesus. Um, I love that my, my dad unashamedly told everybody, I taught this to this preschoolers, and now I'm teaching it to you. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? That's like uh, getting fed goldfish crackers for lunch. We feed it to the preschoolers. We feed it to you, you know, plus more stuff because you're an adult. No, but I love that our founding pastor can speak to preschoolers and their grandparents. He can speak cross-generationally. I love that because we see this church as a cross-intergenerational kind of church. You know what's cool about this? My favorite kid up here is the only one whose face you can't see all the way on the right. That's my daughter. Her eyes sticking up above that head. Thank you, big head, for blocking the way of my pretty girl. Okay. <laughs> we graduated 16 kids. And um, can, I, can, I, can I tell you some real things about the school real quick? Uh, stuff that we won't always say, but I want to tell you because you're, you're the family. Uh, we had a big leadership transition in the church, uh, in the school. Sorry, in the school and the church and the church and the school. And one of the teachers that helped us to start the school had a transition in life, so she stepped out. Uh, we had an amazing group of teachers led by Shannon Chong, who really stepped up to the plate. Shannon, wave your hand. We want to recognize and thank you for your ministry. <laughs> Shannon's an awesome lead teacher there. She's doing so good, along with her husband, Wes. So we see the ministry happening at the school. C can you imagine kids who don't go to church hearing about God's love for them? Isn't that awesome? That we get to talk about these kind of things to kids that get to hear about Jesus' love. Well, you know that our church is about formation and mission. And mission kicked up not just a notch. Mission kicked up like 10 notches this year. We've always talked about doing something in the community, but now as the lead pastor, I'm doing this stuff and it allows my dad to focus more on mission. So Pastor Owen has been leading a team of mission going into the community. Here's a couple things we've been doing. Every first Saturday, they've been at Loicalo Park over there on School Street behind Mexico Restaurant, kind of by Rainbow Drive-In over there by Damien. Loicalo Park is a loi that's been around for hundreds of years. And it's tended to by a group. And they said, we always need volunteers. So we said, as a church, we'll go once a, uh, once a month on Saturday. There's other people that go, but there's a bunch of us here that go to the Loicala Park. On top of that, we've been at Palama Settlement. You've heard about Palama Settlement happening? Um, what's really cool is this is one of many pictures of feeding kids. They feed between 120 to 150 kids per week going on Wednesdays and Thursdays. You see that guy in the back? That's Greg. Greg is one of a bunch of volunteers that goes and loves these kids so much that they know him by name. Hey, Uncle Greg, or whatever it is, Auntie so-and-so. But on top of that, Greg is the one that makes the coffee every Sunday morning in the cafe. So uh, we want to thank Greg and other servants like him for having hearts that want to serve Jesus in the church and outside of the church. Here's the cool part about Palama. If you go consistently and you have character, man, that equals an impact in people's lives, doesn't it? Like if they know you're going to be there and you're the same person, that just leads to an impact that you can make in someone's life. These kids that are coming, they know, hey, the church is here to serve. Not just with this kind of stuff. The volleyball team, I don't know if you notice in the back, we talked about Kavika Shoji in the back in the white by the basketball goal. And over there to the left, you can kind of see half his head, oh, kind of like my daughter being blocked, only his eyes. Uh, Coach Dave Shoji in the corner over there. Dave's a part of the church. He comes to the 7 a.m. service. So him and Kavika did a clinic for these kids uh, in the volleyball teams. We're trying to make an impact at Palama Settlement. You see where we're going with this? One of those big impacts we made was Trunk or Treat. We did our Halloween event there. If you weren't there, you missed out on more than 700 people coming to the Palama Settlement grounds. We don't know how many people were there because we didn't have a clicker taking a head count and there's multiple ways in. But we estimate more than 700 people came to the Trunk or Treat event. Many of you set up your car and decorated it and made it awesome. I don't know who that weirdo is. That's me. But um, we had all these games and booths and prizes. It was so fun. We also had unsung heroes who were doing security or parking and never got to see all the fun stuff, but just wanted to serve. You know what that says? We want to make a difference here. What was cool about Trunk or Treat? We had a big thing, lots of fun, lots of candy. And we didn't say, okay, bye. See you guys next year. We'll be back again. Like Santa Claus. No, 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 no. We'll see you on Wednesday when we're going to be feeding again and reaching out consistently again. You see that? Consistency over time. We're trying to make a difference and an impact here. On top of that, we've been out at um, Kapolei area, Kalailoa. There's a veteran center. Uh, Auntie Bobby and her team have been doing things for Thanksgiving for the Veterans Outreach Center. 
They've been doing stuff out over there uh, for Veterans Day. And they're also going to be singing Christmas carols uh, out there on uh, December, was it 15 or 16, a Friday. If you're interested in joining up, there's teams that are doing stuff in the community. Also, Bless to Bless, we've been blessing the schools out here. Hey, thank you guys for giving to Bless to Bless. It's been really cool. I'm pleased to announce that we gave so much to the schools and also toys to the Hawaii Children's Cancer Foundation. We are such a generous church, and people that receive all this stuff are incredibly grateful. The lady from Hawaii Children's Cancer Foundation came out. She loaded up all the toys in her car, could barely fit in her car, and she said, thank you so much for your church. I said, hey, we just want to bless. We've been blessed to bless. So church, thank you for blessing others. Would you give a hand to our entire church for blessing our community and mission in so many ways? There's countless names to recognize, like Alex, Ao Young, Bobby Arnold, Char Out, David, and the art ministry are doing it, those students out there. There's so much that's happened in our community. I love what God is doing through this church. Here's um, two last ones. Um, our Kupuna ministry has been rolling as we try to minister to this age demographic here in our church. Pastor Frida and her team are putting together an awesome thing for Kupuna to gather, to be fed physically in their tummies and spiritually because there's good word and worship going on there. But you know what I love about this picture of the Kupuna Christmas dinner held at Owl's Garden right up here in Kalihi? I love that no one is listening and everybody's eating. That's how you know the food is really good, right? You know what's awesome too is they did games and giveaways and prizes. Oh, look at poor guy. He want a hair curler, but no more use. So <laughs> they have a really good time doing that. And you know, all ministry extends from the leader. So, hey, can we thank Pastor Frida for her ministry to our seniors? <laughs> but on top of that, her ministry in prayer and healing. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening as God is moving through ministries like prayer and healing that went to twice a, uh, twice a month. We're seeing lives being changed by Jesus. We're seeing the power of prayer happen in people's lives. So what does that mean for us? It means this. If we are placed here on purpose, if we're going to be present where God has placed us, here's three things that I want you to hear about from me right now as we expand on these things into 2023. First of all, our school is a ministry. We want to expand that ministry. We want to expand the school. During COVID, we had to shrink the school because of different reasons and staffing and students, square footage, Department of Health. Now is the time to expand the school, which means we want to hire another teacher and a couple more support things. We want to expand in our facility when it comes to things that we have to use for our students. We want to see what God is going to do in our school and through our school as we minister to the community outside of this area, just here on the metro block that we're on. We believe the school is a viable part of how God is going to use us to bless the community. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. It's not just a preschool. It's a ministry to people. Here's the second thing that we want to do. Palama Settlement ministry has been good. Ministry is not, I'm sorry, mission is not limited to Palama Settlement. But what a big open door it's been for us. Why wouldn't we walk through that door wholeheartedly? We've been spending weeks, months investing into kids' stomachs, feeding them dinner. Now we want to invest into their hearts. We'll continue on the stomach. How do we impact a life? We're looking at how do we explore doing those kind of things. Mentoring opportunities. How do we bridge the gap between, oh, they're just here to feed me, to, oh, they care about me. They want to invest into my life. We can do this. We're looking at how we do this going into 2023. What does that require? Lots of prayer. Lots of hands and lots of hearts that want to care for kids. Here's the third thing, and I'm really excited about this one too. I believe God has placed our church where we are for a reason, not just in Kalihi, but in this building. And if I can be really, really honest with you, I think we need to use this building better. If you notice, on Sunday, we use the cafe a lot. Monday through Friday, we don't use it at all. What a waste. In 2023, we want to turn the cafe into a functioning, usable cafe that serves food, coffee, salad, sandwiches, things throughout the week, that the neighborhood, the community would see, oh, there's a place to eat over there. And it not necessarily directly in line with the church. It's a place to eat, but it's also a part of the church. You see what I'm talking about? There's a place for the community to gather, and it's a good place for people to get something to not just eat and drink, but to socialize to, what's the Christian word for socialize? Fellowship, you know, stuff like that, for us to be together. Here's what I see happening. 
I see the neighborhood coming because people that, uh, if you ever go eat after service in this area over here, where do you eat that's healthy? Any, any, anybody, anybody can tell me? Any place healthy that's under $20 for lunch? Uh, I went to a certain place over here for lunch. It was healthy. I'm not going to say the name, but it had to do with tuna and lettuce. So, you know, it's over there. So, uh, ahi and vegetable. Anyways, it was super expensive. Like, are you serious? Oh, okay, wow, okay, wow. Like, can we do something more, like, more uh, affordable but also delicious and actually allows people to sit and talk story? Where can you get a cup of coffee in this area over here? There's a place over there. There's no more parking. There's a place over here. It's never open. And Starbucks is all the way over there. Can we do something like that with good coffee? Can we have a place where groups can meet during the day? What about on, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night? Can connect groups meet in the cafe? On Friday night, can we do an open mic thing so that young adults have a place to meet, gather, do poetry, do music, do whatever it is so people can gather? Can we have a gathering place in the community? Because you know where I see people gathering in our community? You know where I see people, people, people gathering in the community? On the dogs, back to Vegas, Club Honu, Club, all kind of nightclub bars over here. Can there be a place where there isn't a nightclub bar and it's a legitimate place where people can gather with one another? Absolutely. I think there's a huge opportunity for us to invest into what God's already given us. Here's the best news. We're already paying for the square footage. We're already paying for it. Why not use it? It's going to take some investment, though. It's going to take some investment to turn that into a functioning cafe, an aesthetically pleasing place where you walk in and go, I could cruise here to have some good food and quality employees that make it happen. It's going to take some investment. But what a blessing that we've been placed here. So why not be fully present where God has placed us? Would you say amen to that? I'm super excited about that cafe opportunity. And if you are too, come along. Let's go. Why am I telling you all this? Because I believe vision is going to take us forward. And these are all very doable things. And there's more things I want to share, but I can't yet because we haven't put pen to paper on some other ideas that are coming up. But God has placed us here to be a blessing. Now, here's what you can do. Pray for us. Pray for the wisdom and the opportunities and the right things to line up. Secondly, consider getting involved. Some of you are already serving. If you're not, jump on board. We want you a part of the team. Another thing, can I ask you to give towards these efforts? We don't have a building fund. We don't have a fund for this. No, I'm asking you, in light of year-end giving, many of us towards December look at how do we year-end give towards charitable contributions, things that are tax-deductible, things like that. I'm asking you to consider giving a little more this year. Why? Because God has placed a lot of vision in front of us for where we're going. Yes, it's going to take some funds to do all these things. And yes, we need you to be a part of that. This isn't a capital campaign. We don't have that going. We just have vision for where God is taking us. We want to invite you to come along board and be a part of what God is doing here at Metro. We always say this. If everything I just said about giving turns you off, then ignore me. Because if you, you don't want to give to the church, don't. We don't need you to give. But some of us have been prompted by the Spirit to say, get behind that. Get behind that and invest into that. Because it's going to make a difference in people's lives. And I think many of us have already seen that happen in our lives why not see that happen in the lives of other people? Would you say amen to that? So as you know here at Metro, we don't pass the offering plate. We believe your giving is between you and God. If you choose to give in person, there's ways to do so with the wooden uh, giving boxes. If you choose to give online, we have the QR code in front of you. You can scan that or see someone at the here to help desk. But the bottom line is this. We've been placed here for a reason. Let's be fully present where God has placed us. Let's make a difference out in the community, through our school, through the cafe, through other things and ministries and opportunities. Because I know God is going to use this church as he already has, and he's going to do so going forward. I'm super excited about that. Hey, uh, Pastor Owen's going to come out and close us up this morning. Would you welcome him back to this stage? told you I'm getting excited about December and moving ahead and you know some of us will will say well you're, you're still around so you are not in charge here's here's what's happening okay peel back the curtains we have been doing a overlapping leadership we say not co-leader overlapping Brandon is the lead pastor the senior pastor I am still like here uh, maybe senior most advisor helping him think through some things but here's what I'm excited about He's catching a lot of vision. 
He's catching a lot of vision. And I'm not prompting him in all of these things. He's catching a lot of vision. And it's moving us forward. It's allowing me to uh, golf. I'm, uh, well, I'm available for, for more golf pretty soon. But it, it's allowing me to do more of this and allowing him to really carry this forward. Super excited about that. He's catching vision. We're hoping that you catch vision along with him. This whole thing about the cafe, you drive by here any night. These clubs are packed with people. You can't find parking over there. Not that I've tried, but you can't find parking over there. Why not have a place where our Christian, it doesn't have to be just young adults. I mean, you want to just hang out at, at, in the evening. Why not have a place here? Palama, I have meetings this next week with Palama, trying to really define now what are the programs that we're going to get involved with. And I want to come back to you and say, here's, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, you want to help with this? David was used as an example. He's an artist. The kids flock to him because they love to learn how to draw. They're doing self-portraits of themselves. It speaks a lot to how they see themselves. And we can minister to that. Are you preaching the gospel? Yes. Matthew 5. We do it in such a way that men see your good works. Men and women see your good works and praise the Father in heaven. So we're doing those kind of things. We haven't yet even talked about a backyard right here. You know where Popeye's kind of closed their thing down, that whole property that's available over there, um, the whole neighborhood of apartment building. We haven't yet even touched that. God is up to something. I really sense that. And as Herman Blackaby said, pray that God will show you where he's already working and move towards that. God is working. And we're asking that you move towards this. Time, talent, your treasures. Let me close with this. A.W. Tozer. As, as base a thing as money often is, yet it can be transmuted into everlasting treasure. It can be converted into food for the hungry, clothing for the poor, it can keep a missionary actively winning lost men to the light of the gospel and thus transmute itself into heavenly values. Any temporal possession can be turned into everlasting wealth. Whatever is given to Christ is immediately touched with immortality. Oh, I love that. Folks, we're not just playing games. This is kingdom work for eternity. And we can all be a part of that. Here's what I want us to do. Would you all stand with me? I'm going to pray. Our worship team is going to sing. They're going to worship. And as they worship, would you allow the Holy Spirit, invite the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart in such a way that you see your part, you see yourself as a part of what we're doing. Father, thank you, Lord, for believing in us so much that you gave your best. And, Father, we want to bring the best to this, this party that you call life. In wherever place that you've, uh, you've placed us, our families, our workplaces, wherever it is, we pray, Heavenly Father, that we can bring our best, understanding the depth and the breadth of your love. And as we receive from you, may we be able to squeeze that love out to whoever you put us in contact with so that, your kingdom will be built here on earth as it is in heaven. So touch our hearts today. We pray this in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen, amen. Let's worship.